This is a picture test in practical histology of the gastrointestinal tract. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video at the beginning of each slide and take your time in reading the question and coming up with the answer, then replay the video to confirm your answer and listen to further comments and explanations. Which of the sections A or B represents the pyloric region of the stomach? Give two apparent reasons. Both sections show the characteristic features of the stomach. There are surface mucus cells. The ones on the section A, they appear as if they have an empty cytoplasm because they are stained with uh, hematoxidine and eosine, which doesn't stain the mucus. And cells in B, they are shown to have a dark magenta color because the stain here uh, contains periodic acid shift that uh, specifically stains complex carbohydrates, including the mucins. Note that in contrast to the simple tubular glands of the fundus and the body of the stomach, which is shown in B, these glands, they open into the pits, simple tubular glands. In contrast to that, the pyloric glands in A, they are coiled. So they appear in different profiles. You can see how coiled is this with different profiles here. In addition, it is clear that in the pyloric region, A, section A, the gastric pits, they occupy about half the thickness of the pyloric mucosa. They are deeper than the, the pits that are present in B, which is the body and uh, fundus of the stomach. So the glands, the pyloric glands, they open into deep pits in the pyloric region. And the presence of these deep pits in the pyloric region give the superficial mucosa a characteristic frond-like appearance in histological sections. The gastric pits in the fundus or body of the stomach, they occupy about one quarter of the thickness of the gastric mucosa. Also note that in the section of the pyloric region, A, the glands are lined almost exclusively by mucus secreting cells. Thus, the mucus secreted by pyloric glands protect the entrance to the duodenum from the acid pepsin attack and lubricates the passage of the chyme. There is a very small number of parietal cells which are characterized by their fried egg appearance in the pyloric region. However, these parietal cells are abundant in the fundus and body of the stomach. Name the cells A and B. What type of tissue is represented by the cells C? Name the central lymphatic vessel that would be present in the same area C. This is a longitudinal section in an intestinal villus. It is lined by simple columnar epithelium in which the introcytes, which are the most abundant cells marked by A, they are the main absorptive cells. They have a surface microvilli, which are seen as a brush border, which is very clear here in this section in light microscopy. The, the microvilli themselves, they can only be seen in the electron microscope, but traces of microvilli are shown as brush border in light microscopy. Scattered in between the enterocytes A, there are goblet cells indicated by B. They produce mucine for lubrication of intest intestinal contents uh, to protect the epithelium. These goblet cells, they have their, as very clearly you can see that the nucleus is pushed to the basal part of the uh, cell, while the remainder of the cell cytoplasm is occupied by mucine. The goblet shape is due to the mucus-laden granules on the apical part expanding and causing the part of the cell to balloon. And this mucus, it doesn't stain. It is washed out. It doesn't stain with the conventional uh, hematoxylin eosin preparations. So the cytoplasm appears empty. The lamina propria extends into the core of each villus, and it contains a rich vascular and lymphatic network. Now, this core of vascular and lymphatic network is where the digestive products are absorbed. There are also tiny lymphatic vessels in the core where marker C is located. 
These tiny lymphatic vessels, they drain into a single larger vessel called the lacteal at the center of the villus. The lymphatic and the vascular network are responsible for the transport of the absorbed digestive material. The cells that are indicated by C are smooth muscle cells. They are smooth muscle fibers, extensions from the muscularis mucosa, and they can be seen along the long axis of the villus. Identify the circumscribed structure A, name the cells B. This section shows features of the small intestine, where the mucosal surface is made up of numerous finger-like projections villi, while the mucosa in between the bases of the villi is formed into crypts called the crypts of Libercon, which are the structures represented in A. So A is an intestinal crypt. The lining epithelium, as you can see, is a simple columnar epithelium formed mostly of enterocytes and goblet cells. However, there are other types of cells, like the ones which are marked in B. These cells are panath cells. What is the characteristic feature of these panath cells? They are characteristically located at the base of the crypts. And this is very clearly shown here. Base of the crypt, they have prominent eosinophilic apical granules. The granules contain antimicrobial enzymes and they provide a first line of defense against any disease producing microbes which survive the passage through the stomach. Name the junction indicated by the line A and identify the area B. There is an abrupt change of features in this section on either side of the line A. On the right side, note the villi, the finger-like projections here that characterize the small intestine. And at the same time, notice the presence of these glands which are located in the submucosa, mucus secreting glands. These are Brunner's glands. In the small intestine, Brunner's glands are present in the duodenum. On the left side of the line, this is the pyloric region of the stomach. There are surface mucus cells and there are gastric pits. But these pits in the region of the pylorus, they are deep pits, unlike the pits in the body and the fundus of the stomach. That's why the appearance of the pits in the pyloric region might be confusing with villi. The deep pits of the pyloric region of the stomach, they give the mucosa a frond-like appearance. Again, on the left side, you can also note that there are gastric glands that open at the bottom of the pits. These are parts of the mucosa. You can see here the muscularis mucosa layer separating between the mucosa and the submucosa. And in the region of the submucosa, you don't find any glands, unlike the region of the submucosa of the duodenum on the right side where you can see Brunner's glands. So on the left side, we have a section at the pyloric region of the stomach. And on the right side, we have intestinal villi representing small intestine and the presence of Brunner's glands of the in the submucosa representing the duodenum and the junction is therefore a gastroduodenal junction. In the region B where the pylorus of the stomach is located, this is a thickened area of the muscularis externa or muscularis propria and it is actually in the pyloric sphincter that specifically the inner circular fibers of the muscularis externa are thickened to form the pyloric sphincter. So region B represents the pyloric sphincter, the thickened inner circular muscle fibers of the muscularis propria. Name the structure A and the region B. The section shows parts of the classical structural unit of the liver, the hepatic lobule with its uh, roughly hexagonal shape and it is actually it is uh, surrounded by connective tissue and there are portal tracts at the corners, so region B represents a portal tract, while in the center of the hepatic lobule, this is a central vein, or we call it a, centri, a centrilobular venule or a central vein. Portal tracts at B, they contain three main structures 
a branch of the hepatic artery, a branch of the portal vein, and a tributary of the bile duct. So hence the name the portal triad for these structures that are located in the portal tract. Now given that uh, this is a tangential section of mucosa of the gut tube, it is a section through the mucosa, parallel to the surface of the mucosa, which part of the gastrointestinal tract is shown. So because this section is parallel to the mucosa, then the tubular glands, which might be present here, they are cut across their longitudinal axis, so they will appear as circular profiles, like the ones that we see in here. That is the lumen of the gland, and these are the cells that line the gland. We can see here that most of the cells are columnar cells forming a simple columnar epithelium, but here and there we can see large cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm, centrally located rounded nucleus, and they, these cells, they have the characteristic fried egg appearance. These cells, therefore, are the parietal cells, which are characteristic for the gastric glands. Similar features can also be seen if the section passes through the crypts of the small intestine or of the large intestine, but in that case, we will not be able to see the parietal cells. In addition, in sections of the crypts of the small intestine or the large intestine, we will be able to see goblet cells. Goblet cells are not present in the gastric mucosa, like this one. Identify the part of the gut, be specific, give two obvious reasons for your identification. This part of the gut tube shows villi as well as crypts. This gives an indication that the section is of the small intestine. Now, the absence of Brunner's glands in the submucosa, mucus secreting glands in the submucosa, excludes that this is a duodenum. So we are left with either jejunum or the ileum. A closer look will show that the villi, although they can be seen, but they are shorter than those in other parts of the small intestine. In this section as well, note that there is a very obvious feature. The submucosal layer contains pyrus patches. These are dense aggregates of lymphoid tissue that constitute the gut component of the GALT, gut-associated lymphoid tissue. GALT is part of MALT, mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, uh, which MALT is a, a general name that can be used for other mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue that are present in other systems, for example, the respiratory system. This lymphoid tissue, represented here in Pyers patches, provide defense mechanism because of the continuity of the gut with the external environment. Now these lymphoid nodules, some of them are present in the mucosa, like this one, lamina propria of the mucosa, and being very big, they, uh, they can extend into the submucosa, and you can see that many of them, they show germinal centers. Especially in the terminal ileum, they might be large enough to produce a visible bulge on the luminal surface that can be seen by the naked eye and in many other parts of the gut the lymphoid tissue is represented by diffusely scattered cells in the lamina propria not in the form of aggregated lymphoid tissue like this one so now the presence of the villi indicates although they are short villi but this indicates that we are in the small intestine the absence of Brunner's glands in the submucosa excludes the duodenum and uh, we are left with either the jejunum or the ileum, the presence of these lymphoid follicles in the mucosa and the submucosa, the pyrus patches, confirms that this is the ileum. It is the hallmark of the ileum. Given this an exocrine glandular tissue, identify the encircled structures A and B. Now this gland appears to contain mainly serous sini. And these are represented by uh, the one that is encircled in A. The SINI represent the secretory unit of the gland. And the cells of a serous sinus secretes proteins and glycoproteins, and their dark cytoplasm reflects that they have a machinery of rough endoplasmic reticulum for protein uh, secretion. And the nucleus, as you can see it here, is rounded 
or oval. It occupies the basal part of the cell. Secretory granules are stored in the apical part of the cytoplasm, and in the center there is the lumen here. So the secretions goes uh, into the lumen from the apical part of the of the cells. Uh, so these are serous secreting cells. The mucus secreting cells would have a paler cytoplasm because the mucus they contain is not stained. In fact, this is um, a parotid gland. The parotid gland is almost exclusively serous. B represents a duct, the secretion of the sinus, which goes into the center of the sinus and then goes into a duct to be excreted to the outside. This is an exocrine gland, not endocrine. Endocrine glands do not have ducts. Their secretions go to the blood. So B represents a duct. It's an intercalated duct present among the sini. These ducts become larger and larger and uh, form like these ducts here, the interlobular ducts, which are present in connective tissue separating between the lobules of uh, exocrine glands. You can see that uh, the lining of the duct is a cuboidal epithelium and that the duct shows a, a distinct lumen in the center. And as I mentioned, that larger ducts will be present in the connective tissue and will be accompanied by blood vessels. So here we have another one, a larger duct. This is another larger duct. You can see the cuboidal epithelium lining the duct. The nearby blood vessels will be lined by endothelium, not by cuboidal epithelium.